Hi, I'm Gavin Nielsen. We're continuing our march on the, the Micro Mouse uh, uh, Warpath here. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little more in depth about rigid transforms um, and we're going to add two stability wheels. You remember last time we just added wheels one and two which are left and right but we could still kind of rotate uh, through the uh, maze floor. So we're going to fix that this time. So first let's talk about transforms real quickly. Um, this is over in SolidWorks, but I wanted to show you kind of how how to think about the transform. So I've prescribed already, um, we're just keeping the colors here, X is red. So there's a translation here, an X of a certain amount, and no Y translation, no Z translation. But I can change the way that the definition of this next coordinate system is relative to the other coordinate system, the first one. So if I consider this my origin, then I can use a rigid transform to translate, let's say, let's say it's eight units in X, and maybe we want to rotate 90 degrees along Y, along green, which then changes how everything is defined. And that's extremely useful when, for example, you use the revolute um, uh, joint. We'll talk about that next time. Um, uh, we need, and that's only defined on the z-axis, so we actually need to orient the z-axis in a certain way each time. So um, anyway, that's a little bit about a little more about rigid transforms. There's the, the translate and the rotation about you know, and you can do rotating about multiple different axes. Maybe you need a little on on that and a little on the other one to get things just where you need it. So that's uh, that's a little more on rigid transforms. Now let's talk about getting this. Uh, this fellow back where it needs to be. Here's our starting point. Oh, and I wanted to also point out, um, just as a reminder, you've got to make sure that you add this library to your path for the context to work each time. Either that or do it when you're in uh, uh, administrative mode, administrator mode. So here we are, <clears throat> and we need to add some rigid transforms again. But if you recall, these rigid transforms, they have one rotation and uh, they go negative and positive 42 millimeters left to right. Um, we don't want to do that. Actually, we want to have, I'm going to right click and drag here. Um, and I'll click on this box and rotate it just so we can kind of make things look nice. Um, so here's the PCB platform. I'm going to rotate this around using Control R for 90 degrees each time and make sure that the PCB platform is connected to B for base. And then the follower part of the transform, or F, is what we're going to make a new bot body on, new solid body. So I'm going to click here and start typing solid. Here we go. And this is going to be our rear stabilizer. OK. So we need a rigid transform. Well, first, how, how big do we think this rear stabilizer needs to be? Our, our cylinders, our wheels, left and right, are 32 millimeters, but we don't need something that big. We just need a little sphere that's going to have a little bit of contact with the ground. So um, why don't we do, I did this earlier, so we only have to do it one time. We don't have to try a whole bunch. <laughs> Isn't that good planning? Um, and uh, we're just going to do a five millimeter wheel. And everything else is fine in here. Um, and then I want to uh, we want to we don't need a rotation so I just double clicked on the rigid transform from the PCB to the rear stabilizer so we don't need any transform because we're connecting up to a sphere so there's there's no point really now um, left to right was in the X so we're gonna make that zero and center it and front to back this is gonna be back in the Y so we'll make it negative and 50 millimeters is what we need. But we also want to go down a little bit because otherwise it's going to put the sphere in the middle of the PCB. I'm going to do it wrong first. That's always a good way to learn. And uh, that'll let you see what's going on. So after I fix this, and I'll press Control D. Then you'll be able to see the, um, the new, this is the demo, good. Um, and you can see 
the rear stabilizer. I want to show this. And where to go? Oh, sorry, this is the maze floor. <laughs> My bad. Um, we want to show only the PCB platform, show only this, and then zoom to it, and then we'll show the rear stabilizer. There we go. And you can see how it kind of pokes up in the middle. So we want, we need to push that down a little bit, and we're going to push it negative 8 in Z. And uh, you'll get used to these things after you do them enough times. Uh, oops, sorry. You can see there, negative 8 millimeters. And I'm going to save this and then press control D again. You can see that pop down there. Okay, now while we're here, um, I want to change some colors so you can see how to do that real quickly. Um, I'm going to make, I'm going to double click on the PCB platform and then I'm going to go to graphic and expand the visual properties. And this just makes it easier to see things. So I'm going to make, I clicked on that little uh, color thing there. I'm going to make it kind of a reddish color and say okay. And I'm going to make, and actually I'm going to update this so you can see. So I'll click anywhere and then press Control D and it'll update this to make it red. Um, I'll do the same thing with the rear stabilizer and I'll make this one, I don't know, how about cyan? A nice cyan, sort of aqua cyan, something like that. Control D, there it is. And we'll make wheel one just so we can see these a little bit better and practice make this one kind of bluish and we'll make this one kind of greenish very good okay and then a little control D good and you'll notice that those, those aren't showing up because they're hidden. So we have to click on wheel one, show this, wheel two, show this, and there they are. Now we still need another stabilizer. We have one in the back, so we want to add one to the front. Now, you know, if you're familiar with circuit theory and the way topology works for these kind of things, you know it doesn't matter where in the diagram that these are connected. But just to make it so that uh, you can kind of find your way around, I think it's it's generally a good idea to uh, so I'm, to kind of mimic the layout as much as you can in the diagram. So I'm gonna I just copy this rigid transform. I'm gonna rotate it using Control R a couple of times, and I'm gonna connect it again to that PCB coordinate system. Now you recall that this one was uh, this one was a negative 50 back and negative 8 down. So this one, we could attach the base to the same node. We're referencing it in the same way. We don't want to go negative 50, we want to go positive 50. Okay, good. And we need exactly the same kind of rear stabilizer, although we'll rename it to front stabilizer and connect it up. Okay. Save that, click anywhere, and then Control D. And if we rotate this around, we can see we have another one. And why don't we change that color here too? To make the graphic um, about magenta ish. Control D. There we go. There's the front. Okay. So now we have that, but you recall. Now we have the inertial properties and they're spatially distributed the way we want them with these rigid transforms, but we still need the connection for the, uh, the contacts. So what we're going to do is we'll make a copy of this sort of contact and um, before we connect them up actually we'll change the sphere radius because you remember we made these rear stabilizers a sphere of five millimeters. So we're going to do the same thing. This is in terms of meters, so 0 0.005, and we'll say it's connected the same way. And just to make it simple, we'll leave the contact and friction the same, and we'll leave the um, contact surface visualization off, and then we'll connect this up. 
nice and easy. And we want to do exactly the same thing to this guy. But remember, we're, we're copying the one that has the five millimeter radius. Um, if you saw what I did right there, I grabbed a copy of that one. Okay. So now if I save it and update the diagram, this won't move. But if I run this model, you'll see this will fall a little bit. And in order for us to see that it now has stability, I'm going to change one of these rigid transforms for the... Um, it also takes a little longer to run, see. Um, I'm going to change... I'll hit stop there. I'm going to make this a little bit unbalanced. So I'm just going to push this uh, left wheel back about 10 millimeters, so minus 10. And that will unbalance it a little bit. And I'm just going to rotate this around so you can see better. Okay. Now, when I run this, watch what happens. It drops, and you can notice that it comes down, and I'm going to hit stop, actually right there, and then slow it down to maybe one-eighth speed, maybe even slower than that. So you can see it, one sixteenth speed, and you can see that it actually bounced a little on that front, and it's catching itself. So there you have it. Uh, that's we now have full stability in three space, and we've learned a little more about rigid transforms. We've modified our uh, contact conditions, and we're ready actually the next time to um, actually actuate actually actuate some joints. It's going to be great, and uh, we'll be able to drive this thing around. So that'll be great, and I hope you join me again soon. Thanks. <laughs>